We're back here with another edition of Down and Back with Corn Doug. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the Wednesday live show with the guys from the Brews and Reviews on the uh, talking about the, the big thing. This well, I guess I'm going to say it's a minor thing happening this weekend because there is another ACL event coming up, but the uh, the Battle of Big Mills too. Um, hope you're able to watch that tomorrow. Uh, I think that started at 3 p.m. Eastern time, a little earlier Pacific, but uh, but yeah, that should be a great a great time. But uh, this week's show really really pumped up with this week's show. Um, the guy who made me look like a genius last week. Uh, we're gonna have Jay Rubin on the show. Him and Lester Price got the uh, got the win in the doubles. I called it. I'm gonna say I called it. So uh, so yeah. So we're gonna have him on the show. Um, but yeah, first local stuff. Still kind of working. Um, I think Matt is uh, is kind of working on just kind of what uh, what format we're gonna use for uh, for when we can get together here locally. Now that we're able to, um, looks like it's gonna be some outdoor throwing. Like I said in the past, um, six people, just a, a five game round robin playing singles. Then you're then those people head off. We'll bring in six new people, play another five game, and then we'll kind of keep kind of uh, switching it up from that there. So uh, I might as well get right to it. Bring in the uh, ACL Pro, the winner from uh, last weekend in in Texas, uh, Jay Rubin. Welcome to the Down and Back. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Like I, like I said, uh, everyone was talking about all the young guys with uh, Josh and AJ and 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 Eddie. Although Eddie did kind of get you in the final of the singles, but uh, yeah, you and you and Lester really uh, really pulled it off in the doubles. Yeah, no, we we shot well. We had the improbable comeback, uh, being down sixteen to ten in the last frame. Um, you know, there's a little bit of coaching where Lester wanted to shoot an airmail with our block in front of the hole. And I was like, you know what, why don't you try to step out, leave the block in their way and try to come around it. And he stepped out, he listened to me and he actually hopped around it and went in the hole. And I think that set the tone for the rest of the round and kind of put the dagger in there. So, you know, what I ended up telling him is, look, you know, yeah, there's a lot of skill involved in this game, but, you know, sometimes you need a little bit of luck on your side. Um, and a little bit of luck, especially in 10 rounds, you know, can propel you, you know, to bigger and better things. And it just did. It snowballed for us in the victory after victory and ultimately, you know, taking down the uh, the doubles championship. Exactly, yeah. But the, the one shot that everyone did see from, from your, uh, I believe it was the final game, where it was just no luck at all for you guys. That one where you just had the four bags just hanging there that just didn't want to go. No, and you know what? I, I was telling Lester on his third bag, or yeah, his third bag. I actually told him to flip it over and slide it on the fast side um, because I was afraid of something potentially jamming up around the hole, having two bags on that, you know, that patch. Um, but he felt more comfortable with, you know, the patch side down. And, you know, I wasn't going to argue with it. I was like, you know what, if he feels comfortable, I'm sure he can pull it off. Um, but I was just letting him know as a partner down there, it's his eyes, you know, this is the shot I'm looking at. This is what I think is, you know, the best advantage for us to put these bags in the hole. Um, but, yeah, he got robbed. He hit that bag perfect, and they uh, they just bunched up on him. Yeah. So what I noticed from you guys, and I noticed it with – um, Frank and Jamie as well too. You guys just really had that communication down when you're playing. And I, I know for myself being a doubles player here, that that communication, that trust in your partner is like really big. Absolutely. Um, you know, you got to have confidence in your partner being able to hit whatever shot um, it is, you know, whether it's a tough push or whether you got an airmail or you know, step out and go around a bag, even throwing a curve bag or flop shot. Like you got to be extremely confident in your partner. And even when they do miss, you know what I mean? Encourage them, um, you know, letting them know, Hey, you know what? I seen you through it like this, maybe tweak it like that next time. And, you know, work those little kinks out. And I think that, you know, chemistry, you know, can go a long way as you know, you're building yourself to trying to become the best team in the country for the course of the year. Exactly. Yeah. Like you guys, did take out, uh, uh, jo like I said, Josh and AJ there. They, because uh, they were, you know, coming in from from Fort Lauderdale. They were they were kind of hot guys. Yeah, no, Josh and AJ. I mean, they played really well. Uh, you know, they won the, I believe it was the advanced doubles last year at the championships. 
Um, and then, you know, I had a good showing in Fort Lauderdale. So we knew they were going to be one of the teams to beat um, along with, you know, Eddie and Dave as well. So we knew, you know, we had a, we had a, you know, we didn't have the easy side of the bracket or anything like that. We had to play solid team after solid team. Um, but ultimately, we stuck with our game plan, you know, put bags down the middle. Uh, Lester hit a bunch of tough shots. Um, you know, when AJ was missing, I was able to capitalize and give us some points and give us a cushion. Um, you know, the, the, the kind of the swing was I stepped out and I had two bags around the hole and I stepped out over AJ's block and I dragged one of mine and ultimately got the five that round. Um, so I took it from a, I don't remember if it was two nothing or four nothing, but it opened it up to seven or nine to nothing. Um, you know, when you're playing 10 rounds, you know, those, those few points, those little chunk rounds, you need to take advantage of. And luckily I was able to execute that one, give us the bigger lead and, uh, we were able to close it out. Yeah. So, uh, so now just sticking with the doubles, how, how does it, What's your mindset now going into this weekend? Because you guys are now going back to Phoenix playing again here, knowing that you have qualified already. How does that? Do you have? You know, how does that little bit of a question, I guess, make you feel going into this weekend? Uh, we feel great coming into this weekend. I just talked to Lester right before uh, you know I got on with you. Um, and, you know, we were talking about you know riding the most play together this is the second time me and lester have other played together so this week going to be the third um so not having all those matches under our belt um i think this is key for us to win every single game that we can and keep building that confidence building that chemistry game after game um so when it does come to the end of the year we get to the championships and we get in a big you know four team 64 you know team type bracket um, you know, we got all that experience under our belt, you know, whether we start strong or whether we start slow, we know we can come back. You know, we pulled out the improbable comeback. So I think, uh, I think this weekend is going to be a, a really good showing for us again. Exactly. So then you, uh, you guys had that big win, the doubles, and then you get that luck of the draw and singles where you guys are up against each other almost right away. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, I heard about that before we even started playing doubles, before we got to the broadcast. And uh, I was like, well, go figure. You know, I, I had to play Tyler Parent my first game in singles, and then I got into playing Lester, and I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to have any cupcakes. And I don't expect anything to be easy. Um, but I knew I had to go out there, and I had to show my partner even more, you know, what I was capable of doing. Um, you know, and I think I put on a pretty good show. You know, I hit 35 out of 40. You know, I think I should have made 38 out of those 40, but that's just me being a perfectionist. Um, and Lester, you know, he shot really good. I mean, he could have beaten most players that day. Uh, he hit some tough drags to save some rounds for him and even get a couple points. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't how I envisioned starting off uh, singles, but I'll take the W. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's – and, again, you get that that whole bag luck is, is in the final with Eddie with that last bag that – where it, you know, it just, it, it just, that one bag just didn't want to go, even though you did, you did give it that little touch. Yeah. You know, I set up the round perfectly the way I wanted it to. So when Eddie missed short to the right, I consider myself a great pusher. Um, so what I wanted to do was get up next to Eddie's bag. If not stay down the middle and just ahead of it um, to take his lane away from one see what he's going to do. And he ended up pushing that bag up and he stayed behind it really well. Um, you know, had he been off center on that push, um, you know, I'm sliding up the middle, you know, whether it's a replacement bag or I take both into the hole and I'm playing for that four point round. Um, but he kept that block there. He missed his first air mail. I made my first air mail. So I knew the pressure was coming back to him. And, uh, Ultimately, yeah, the bag got to the front of the hole. I went and I looked at it, and I figured if I can throw a lower, uh, not necessarily a line drive, but a lower air mail to kind of ride on top of it, I figured I could scoop both bags in, and I've done it before. But, um, yeah, I, I hit the bag. It moved, and it just it did not move into the hole. So, But Eddie shocked right, and my hat's off to him because uh, it was well-deserved and well-earned. Oh yeah, both of you guys were just on fire there in, in singles. So it's and it was and it's just really nice to see. Actually, I was able to watch it online with uh, 
with to someone else's feed because for some reason they they don't want to show it here in Canada, which is uh, <laughs> which really unfortunate because you know we've we've got that big following here. It's just we just need to be able to to see it a bit more on TV. So uh, so going back to them last weekend still, um, what's it feel like playing in front of nobody? I guess you're back. It's almost like playing back playing a backyard game, but uh, it's got to have that different feel to it. Yeah, it's a different feel with nobody there, um, and you still got the lights and you still got the cameras going. So everything, you know, when it comes to that is still the same. Um, you know, when I got up to the board, I just envisioned like I was, you know, practicing by myself. Um, you know, in the winter months, I have to throw a board at a short distance in my house because that's the only way I can keep my arm loose. Uh, so for me, that's the mindset and the focus that I had was like I was playing at home. I had my board set up. I was thrown the same way that I was, and I just wanted to keep everything down the middle and play off, you know, what my opponent was doing. Um, but no, it wasn't, there were no nerves, no jitters. Uh, I, I felt real comfortable, more comfortable than I actually thought it would be, um, you know, going into it. Now, I know from the, the first one in, uh, in Rock Hill there, some of the guys are saying that they were able to hear Trey a bit more talking yes. did, did was that did that play a factor in anything as well too um no you know what it kind of it fed off of me at times like when i was playing lester in singles uh you could hear the commentary you know about me having an effortless throw or how many bags i've made in a row and uh you know in the back of my mind i was like okay like i didn't try to think about it too much but you do hear it and it does pop into your brain so as i'm walking back and forth you know to the other side of the board um you know i'm like okay i'm doing something special here I'm, we're doing something good for the fans and people watching uh and i tried to roll off you know right off of that uh but it did burn me in one round against lester i hit two or three air mails in a row and as i go to hit the third one trey was talking about trying to find adjectives about the playing and i shanked that when i hit it a little bit right of the hole and it messed me up so it, it, it went both ways to be honest with you yeah so uh so we've now talked about your your great weekend you had last weekend your your upcoming stuff here this weekend um your your background how uh how you kind of got started yeah so i got started about five years ago i played a local tournament near my house and uh i showed up with one of my cousin's extended cousins, I've never met the guy, never played with him. And we beat one of the better local teams here, like 21-19 or 21-20. Um, and that night I got home, I got lit up everywhere on Facebook. Midwest baggers, uh, you know, hundreds of friend requests from guys in the area. So once that all happened, I started to see Midwest baggers was posting different tournaments um, all throughout. Uh, you know, the Midwest here. So you start popping into these little bit, you know, tournaments and, you know, the players start to understand who you are. They see your skill set. Next thing you know, people are inviting you out. Um, and then I kind of rolled off of that. So way I did it was, is I broke the state of Illinois down into tiers of players. So for me, I started, let's just say at a D tier, I was picking off players every single tier. So once I hit everybody that was in the D tier, I moved myself up and I wanted to compete against the C. C to B and B to A and, you know, ultimate we where I'm at now. So I think, you know, that did help me with my progression because it, it really helped me understand where I stood against my peers. Mm -hmm. uh, so two years ago, I, I started with the ACL. Uh, last year was my kind of coming out party if you will i finished second overall in the standings and advanced uh won a national i had two second place in my bracket finishes i had a fourth and a fifth i want to say as well and then uh the singles i had or doubles i had the win and then i think we had a second place finish so there was a good resume and a good body of work that i put together um you know, and it, it ultimately led me to becoming partners with Lester Price this year. So I'm pretty excited about where things are going. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, you know, you, like you said, you got into it five years ago. I, I wasn't able to find out for up here. It, it really it was really hard because 
I started playing 2011 down in down in North Carolina one weekend a year at a NASCAR race, and then just trying to find you know we finally started having leagues up here about three years ago. So it's just for me it was it was easy getting the start here, but now everybody's kind of picked up their game to where I'm at, and it's like oh now so uh, <laughs> your uh, your advice to any new players that are coming out. Um, for me, I'm a big student of the game. I like to study, um, but I didn't ask a lot of questions. I didn't want people to know where my mindset was or I was at. Um, so I would study all the top players or players that were better than me. But one thing I would say is, uh, you know, with these faster bags, I would still learn how to throw a flat bag. That flat bag will help you indoors and it'll help you outdoors when you're cutting through wind or any of that stuff. So uh, flat bag for sure. Um, and when you practice, you know, practice as if it is a game situation, not ghost, but practice is stepping out, you know, stepping out on throwing 20 bags on each side of the board. Get comfortable with every shot. Uh, and the airmail on top of that, because when you get to the main stage and you play on ESPN, when you're throwing those shots, you've already put in the work to make it happen, right? So when you go out there, it just translate. Um, and for me, that was the the work ethic I had, you know, to build myself where I'm up now, um, you know. And I thought I executed those shots pretty well. Um, all things considered. So that was a practice routine for me um, that definitely did work. Yeah, I know. I know I'm a big proponent of telling new people that go and watch online, go on YouTube, watch these, watch these pros, watch how they throw, emulate them until you can really get your, your own throw in. Yeah. And one thing too is, you know, a lot of people like to buy a variety of bags, right? Honestly, stick with one bag. Don't, you know, you can be diverse and have a couple different sets in case, you know, it's you're outside and it's a little bit more tackier. And I understand that. That's fine. Have two or three in your arsenal. But get one bag that you feel absolutely great with and have the most confidence with. You know, a lot of these guys will show up and they're throwing a Reynolds. And then two games later, they're throwing locals. And then after locals, they're going to Widows it's a different bag every single time you're throwing. You're never going to get comfortable unless your throw is that precise bag after bag. And a lot of people aren't. So I would honestly, I would say, you know, find one bag that you really like for me personally, it's, you know, the JR all slides for me. And you could see it when I got to it playing in singles, it didn't matter that I threw game changers all on doubles. Once I got my bag in my hand, I felt invincible, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that's the confidence that people do need to have. Um, you know, when they're playing. Yeah. And I, I find like, I, I find like I've, I've talked about this before. I get so frustrated when I see on the Facebook groups, people are saying, what bag should I be using? Don't be looking at other people. Go and just find the one that's, that you're feeling. Cause people are just going to be, you know, on you about the one bag that they like where it's, I, I kind of related to be like Goldilocks, go and try everything. Right. Yeah. To, to be able to find your one. Absolutely. hundred percent agree with you. Right. So in talking about bags and people collecting bags, um, I, I like to kind of go and talk about people away from the boards. I found out today that you like myself are a, are a card collector as well. So it's, you got your bag collectors, you got your card collectors. So uh, yeah. interesting that you picked up some big one there today that uh, I'm a little jealous of. Yeah, it was funny. I went and I picked up some stuff from Target, and uh, I had to get bubbles for my kids so they could have something to play with this weekend because the weather was supposed to get nicer. And uh, I forgot about it until the end. I was in the line. I was like, oh, I got to go get it. So they had moved the card aisle from like where you're checking out to the toy aisle. So I was like, all right, I'll check it out. Now, anytime I've gone there to get anything from this year to try to chase down Zion or John Morant or any of those guys, they've had nothing. The mm. lady was literally there stocking the shelves with cases of this stuff. So me and another guy were literally sitting there grabbing every box. Like we were literally splitting it 50-50. And uh, I come home and I open up, I think it was my second to last box, and I pulled a Zion rookie auto to 25 it was uh, it was pretty exciting. 
Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I, I kind of, I laugh at, again, with, with the Facebook groups. These people think, I'm going to pay this much for bags. I'm, these, these bags are better because they cost more. And I, 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 back in the early 90s, I did sell cards. And I was like, I would kind of mark cards down a bit to try and be able to get rid of them. And sure. people were like, oh, it's, it's, it's a lower price, so it can't be as good a, a good a card as this other guy that's charging like 20 bucks more for, right? <laughs> but, but it's that's what the bag industry has now become. It's, it's, you have to be the, the, the more card and or the, the, the higher price is better. Same as the card industry, which frustrated the heck out of me when I was back collecting back early in those early 90s. Yeah, you know, and I actually, I just started um, a year ago. So when I would win these tournaments, what I was doing was I had a massive Jordan collection when I was a kid. And, you know, when I, I take care of things and I take care of them very nicely. So Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Shaq, you know, players like that. And I had at least 500 different Jordans, high end, some normal, you know, lower end stuff. Um, but all stuff that would gray really high in the 9 to 10 range. And uh, I didn't have a place to sleep one weekend, so I had to sell an entire toy chest of cards that I had so I could get some money to survive. So what I started to do was, is a year ago, when I would win these tournaments, I would go back and I would buy those Jordans and a PSA 10. And I was going to build up a collection from his rookie year to 93 and stash that away for my children. Mm -hmm. Um and I built up, I think I got about 65 or 70 out of about 180, you know, during that duration. But right now, the industry is just taken off with anything Jordan, Pip, and Rodman, the Bulls. Yeah. And uh, I had to list it on eBay for a, a hefty price based on what market value was. So, yeah, uh, it's fun. It's like being a kid again. Yeah, I know. I remember myself back – Back the eight, the eighties out there was only you only had like the tops and and then up here you had the Opeachy cards. There wasn't sure. really for for hockey at least, but you didn't have all those extra. And then all of a sudden, like the bag world, the early nineties, it just exploded to have a whole bunch of a different one. So I've still, I've I've got my couple here that I uh, that my wife says, why do you still have these here? I'm like, because I have it. Like I've got, you know, the, <laughs> there's there's some rare ones because I got like a Don Mattingly rookie in the Opeachy series, the Canadian cards, which, you know, not many people actually have, right? Yeah, and no. and then there's like a, I got like a Daryl Strawberry, like so, some of those older '80s ball players, not that, that is just you know, it's you know it's, it's something to pass down to the kids. But she's like, you know, why not get rid of it? Well. And Why honestly, those guys are selling right now for a lot more than you may even know. I'm not even sure. But yeah. um, I know like Bo Jackson rookie cards that you could have gotten graded in a 10 for 10 bucks. I mean, they're bringing upwards of $100 now plus uh, for Bo Jackson. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, that stuff, you know, you might be sitting on a little bit more than you think you are. Right oh, now. oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. But it's it's but like you said, you want to pass it down to your kids. Yeah. Right. And it's just, you know, it's, it's, and for me, I'm, I'm looking at right here. I got like eight boxes, eight of like the thousand count boxes right here, 1600. <laughs> and it's like, that's my youth just right over in that corner there. I don't want to give that up. No, it's hard to part with. Trust me. I, I had to do it and I had to do it for the right reasons, yeah. but, um, it's definitely, it's cool to look back on it, especially, you know, if you have some certain memories, you know, from your childhood, the first, big experience of a big pull of your favorite player, whatever it may be. Yep. It's, it's cool to look back and reflect on that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I know for yourself, it's going to be cool to look back on your, uh, on your big wins on YouTube, your, your big shots. And uh, I want to thank you for doing this here. I want uh, best of luck this weekend. Go grab that win number two. Cause I think, uh, I think you guys can, if, if you got, you keep on that roll. I think you guys are going to, going to be the ones to take it again. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, yes. So again, thanks, thanks for coming on for doing this here, and because uh, I know you've had a busy week from your last week to uh, to now. So, uh, so yeah. So just safe travels. Best of luck this weekend, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Absolutely. Thanks. Okay. Jay Rubin on the show. Uh, as you can tell, great guy. Great, great, uh, great interview. Um, you know, I, I love talking to guys like that. That can really get into the game because like I say there's those times with those chess games where you're where he's talking about the different shots that's I really like getting into that whole kind of mindset of 
how those shots are going. So, uh, so yeah, it's our show for this week here. So, uh, remember, check out tomorrow, uh, coming up on, sa- on Saturday here. The Battle of Big Mos, uh 2 is on, but keep that on your laptop, on your phone. Other eye on, on Jay and Lester taking down, an- well, let's say taking down another doubles doubles final um, in Phoenix. And uh, and hopefully I'm going to have soon have some uh, live stuff to talk about here in, in KW. And hopefully you guys are going to have some live stuff wherever you're at. And uh, so, yeah, so thanks for watching this week here. Remember, we're going to come Monday. We're going to be talking about next week's shows um, on Facebook. And, uh, yeah, so just keep having fun. Throw those virtual bags. Stay safe. And that light is at the end of the tunnel where we're going to be coming back playing live cornhole in the very, very near future. See you next week.